What a carp this is. I've had uh, five fish and uh, topped off with a 35 pound scaly fish and it's, it's an absolute banger. <laughs> he looks massive as well. Sorry, I'm a bit of a pickle. That's quite, quite a big fish actually. You join me here on my winter syndicate in Baston in Lincolnshire. It's a nice five, six acre lake. Um, I didn't really know what the stock was. I've just seen a, a couple of nice fish in here uh, from social media and that over the last few months. I thought I'd have, have a little go. Um, got here this afternoon. It's getting on towards, you know, about three, half three now. Not much sun left. So the rods are out. I've got two out in a nice silty area and one's just down to the left on the gravel bar. Um, did me a fair few bites in the last few weeks. Most of my bites have been coming after the hours of dark, uh, between sort of six and seven, so hopefully it's not gonna be long till we get a bite. Good morning. Um, no fish to report from last night, which is very strange. Uh, la last three weeks, I've been catching a lot of my fish in the hours of darkness. Um, some, some nice six fish, and last night I thought we was in, but it went really cold. We got down to about minus two. Um, and I just think it's just knocked it on the head. I'm fishing on good spots, got three rods on spots that have done me bites, good rigs, good bait. And I just think the cold weather's knocked it on the head. The wind's changing today, more northwesterly, which is might ch turn them around, but well, we don't know. Um, there's a bit of ice at the other end of the lake. <laughs> they might be sat under there. You don't know this time of year. I'm just hoping out for a day bite, which I'm a bit sceptical about. Because I've only had one bite out of 22 in the last few weeks in the day. So we'll sit here and enjoy a few more coffees and see what the day brings. So my go-to rig in the last few years, probably getting on for five, six years now, has been my variation of the spinner rig. It's, when, when I'm tying rigs, and I have done for a long time, I like to use strong components, big hooks, sharp hooks, and strong braid. Here I'm using a 25 pound semi-stiff uh, coated braid. <coughs> this one's the, the Camatex. And I have got to go for about eight and a half, nine inches. Is this way I can fish it on firm silt, I can fish it on a clean gravel spot. So even over gravel over the years fishing pop-ups, I've had many carp over over 45 pounds, um, which really is against the grain really. <laughs> my, my thoughts behind fishing a rig like this over gravel is your hook's always presented. It's always in the, that striking position to hit the fish's bottom lip as when it takes. As you see when the rig tightens up, it pulls out straight and because of the aggression of the medium curve, it always wants to get bed deeper into the bottom lip. Now with this rig as well, it gives you the option of fishing it on weed, low-lying weed or like silt because you can just lengthen the, the semi-stiff boom and critically balance your hook bait a little bit more by putting less putty on. <clears throat> so for me, these size 5 medium curves tick all boxes. They're strong, they're reliable and super sharp out of the packet. So on this trip today, I'm fishing two areas. I've got down on my left hand side a clean gravel area and then on my middle and right rod, I've got them both on the same silty depression, but they're both on the same rig. Because I'm getting a firm drop on the silty area, I'm keeping it about eight and a half, nine inches long, and the gravel spot has also got eight and a half, nine inches. I just feel it's got enough to 
if you, if lead hits the bottom and there's two or three inches of silt, sometimes you still get a firm drop and it's just got enough length there for the carp to hang himself. So now if I was fishing a different part of the lake with low-lying Canadian or blanket weed, I'd lengthen the rig to 11, 12 inches, but still use exactly the same components. Right, so starting with the hook link, you, I use a semi-stiff coated braid for a number of reasons really. It just gives me that little bit of stiffness and when the pop-up comes through it kicks it away. And I started using it when I was fishing a snaggy lake a few years back when I was using a, a fluorocarbon boom and a few cut-offs. Using the semi-stiff coated braid eliminated that so I managed to get the fish out of the snags rather than losing them due to the cut-offs. And then come down the rig, I have two blobs of putty. I have one up near the loop which helps counterbalance the pop-up and then one halfway down the hook link just to make sure that that hook link is on the bottom for when the carp are feeding around the hook bait. A figure of eight loop that to a quick change ring swivel and then at the back here I'll go through the front of the eye through the back with the clip and I sh use shrink tubing to keep it all in position. I, I just find that this is a lot stiffer doing this and it keeps the rig where I want it to be. As I come around to that I've got a micro ring swivel held with a hook bead and I get my, my pop-ups I put on them I always use cork balls so I'll get these rolled up for me. Um, Coda baits mark there just a great job. Um, different flavours in it. I use a cell mainline cell base mix with it and different fruit, fruit flavours. So this one's a cell black currant, which has done me really well this spring. And many a carp to over 40 pound. With the hook bead, I always make sure that's in line with the barb. Whether it makes a difference or not, but I just feel where it sits when in the water, it just has that hook point facing down, looking ready to hit the bottom lip of the carp, which is where you want this rig to be sitting, ready for the best of colds. So my baiting approach is pretty much the same all year round, and it starts with boily crumb. I use it spring, summer, autumn, winter. And the base of that is mainline cell. I mean, they don't need no introduction. I've used it for a long time now. Um, and I just I just believe it's just irresistible to cut. I mean, every lake you take it to, you do well on it. So I'll put it through the blender, and through the boily crusher, and you've got the two ways of crushing it. You can have it real fine, like a powder or a, a little chops. It gives the carp a little something else to grub around on. Uh, in the summer, I add particles to this, whether it's tiger nuts, tiger nuts if they're allowed, and I use them crushed, hemp and maize. So during the winter, I tend to add maggots into my mix. It's a winter thing to do, um, and I believe they do get on it quite quickly. Um, some of the bites I've had, some of the fish I've had from the bites on this uh, last few weeks, they've been pooing out a lot of maggots, so they definitely enjoy it. So to my mix, I had one liquid, and that is a smart liquid. I've used it to great effect over the last few years, uh, with summer or winter, and I just believe it gives me an extra dimension uh, to my bait, and it puts me extra fish on the bank, I'm sure of it. Um, when you're putting the boiling crumb in, it's quite fluffy, so if you're fishing when there's quite a bit of wind, I believe that it does take it away from the spot a little bit, so to prevent that, I add a bit of lake water to it, just to dense it up so it goes quicker through the water column and to get near my bait. So like in this session, I've got two rods in the same spot and one off to the side. So each rod does still get the three spums over the top because I like to be as accurate as I can to use my horizon marker and try and send every single spot onto the same, onto the same line. Yeah, so that ensures that each hook bait has got a concentration of bait around it, which in my opinion will bring a quicker bite and from past experiences has done. So this is a bait and approach that I use for my all-round angling, whether I'm on a syndicate lake where I'm fishing for target fish, or whether I'm on a runs water where you're expecting multiple bites. I believe that it can trip up the bigger fish and they can also build something off it and have a good weekend fishing. So I acquired the ticket for this lake about three weeks ago. Um, I'd seen a 40 pound linear on social media um, from this lake, uh, which was in my, my target. So when I was in a local tackle shop getting some maggots to get, over the, to get out over the Christmas break, I saw the owner for the lake in there. He offered me a winter ticket and, uh, and this is where we are now. I've had 22 fish from 22 bites. 
um, a lot, lot of stockies. They put a lot of stockies in last year. There are still some original ones. Last year, like, sorry, last week, I was lucky enough to catch one of them. And the week previous, I had another. So they're both thirty-five pound, thirty-five pound nine, thirty-five pound six. Um, one was half linear, and one was quite, you know, scaleless, quite leathery looking. Um, been here quite a few years, I believe. So that's my 24 hours done with the camera here. Uh, fortunately, I've got two more nights ahead of me, which means two more bite times. Um, I've got my camera stuff here, so if I do catch any, uh, I'll get some footage and some photos. And so hopefully next time you see me, I'll be uh, cradling a carp, and hopefully it's one of the ones I want. Good morning. Um, very cold night last night, minus four. That's resulted on the lake having the lid on it. Um, so obviously no carp last night. I'm not going to catch any more because I'll have to pack up a night early. Uh, it just shows this time of year that we get plummeted temperatures down to the minuses that can knock the fishing on the head. Um, so I think I'm going to have a couple of weeks off now, wait for the weather to warm up a little bit and get back in the pursuit of that big linear. Morning mate, how you doing? Um, how far away are you? It's all kicked off this morning, I've had five bites from about six o'clock. I've got a few waiting in the sling for you. See you in a bit. Morning mate, a bit different to last time. Just a little bit mate, changing the weather's definitely made a difference. Um, it all kicked off this morning. I've had uh, five fish in the last few hours and uh, topped off with a 35 pound scaly fish and it's, it's an absolute banger. So I think we'll get it out and have a look I think. So here we are, that's the first bite of a flurry of bites this morning. Uh, it started about half six, um, managed five in total. This one going 16 pounds. I've got uh, three more in the slings there, um, definitely a little bit bigger than this, and something a little bit special to show you as well. I know it's cliche, but just imagine this one at 40 pounds. <laughs> What a carp this is. I was fortunate enough to catch this last month. So it's, yeah, recapture, but I think she definitely deserves a lift up and show for the cameras. I did have another fish last night that was a recapture, but I did just slip that one back. What a great way to start my return trip from that cold spell we had the other week. But I've still got another night ahead of us. There's the final part of this morning's flurry. Fish just, just into the £20 bracket. Um, I think we'll get this one back now, get all set up for the day and night ahead. Jimmy, what's cool, isn't it? Right, so what a difference four weeks makes. Um, last time you see me, it was minus four. Don't like to make excuses, but that definitely knocked it on the head. Um, turned up here last night, got here the night before camera's got here um, in all intentions to try and get the swim that I've been trickling baiting for the last few weeks now uh, we got here just after dark and got three rods position out onto the, the area that I pre-baited on Monday I changed my baiting approach slightly I put a bit of sweet corn in it because when I first started in January it was part of my mix and for some reason I started leaving it out so sweet corn is a classic all-round carp bait they love it they can't get enough of it and it's highly digestible for this time of the year so still in my mix, I've got crumb cell, smart liquid and maggots. Didn't want to change that because I've had good results on that in the past. Um, so this morning I had quite a good flurry of fish, five fish within like an hour, hour and a half of the first and last take. So 95% of my bites have come in the nighttime hours between 6 p.m. and 6 a.m. in the morning. So I'm really excited for the sun to go down now and get amongst a few again.
bites in the day has come and gone. No bites before come in. It's so looking at about half three now. So get the rods brought in, fresh hook baits put on, check the hook points, a bit of fresh freebies around them, and then get ourselves settled ready for the night. Hopefully get a few bites. Some time for you to get to the shop, innit? <laughs> oh, banger. It's a nice one, that is. Quite look at that. That's an absolute crack of that. And the hook's coming out in the net as well. So how'd you look there, eh? It's less than an hour ago I spoke to you. Me saying that, uh, you have daytime on the bike, not feeling very confident, got to wait till the hours are dark, and uh, the left hand rod was away. Um, unfortunately, we didn't catch all the fight. There's a camera ran next to the shop to get some supplies. Just caught the last end of it, and uh, in the net we've got a real nice scaly mirror. So we're going to get the rod back out to the spot, ready for this evening, and uh, we'll get around and show you. Yeah, so here she is, one that's out of sync to the other ones, <laughs> a lovely scaly one. Um, you don't mind catching these in February, do you? Go and get the goldfish for me, please. So the rod's back out after having that fish. We're gonna have a few refreshments now and get a curry ordered for the evening. Hopefully get a few more of those for the night. Fingers crossed for the ghosty linear. since we've uh, had that one just before dark and uh, yeah bite time again what are we half eight oh no he's going around that tree bit took off didn't it it's an absolute ripper i think these stock i think it might be one of the stockies because it is fighting like mad <coughs> there there he is just down here <laughs> little little common Scooper, there he is. <laughs> hey. Hopefully that's the start of a few more bites. A little bit earlier, but hey ho. Come on the big one. Well, there's the result of that one. Nice little coming, about 12 pound-ish. If this is anything anything to go by of past sessions, kicking off an early bite like that, we could be in for a few more bites throughout the night. So slip this one back and fingers crossed for a big one. Sorry. <laughs> that was absolutely spot on that was. It's gone straight out, it's cracked down straight on the spot. That's another bite that one. Hopefully. <laughs> Maybe, probably won't be. Just want the big one. Come on. If I get the big one, then go home and the missus will be happy with me.
What are we saying, mate? I was sleeping like a baby. And this is 12, I don't know what the time is. It's got to be getting on for midnight, isn't it? One of the little stockies, I believe. Hey. This one woke me up. I think it's about one o'clock in the morning now. It's the same as last time. Um, number eight for the trip. So still on the munch. I think get this one back and then top the spot up with a few more spawns now. See if we can get that early morning spell like we did yesterday. So that's another couple of spawns back on the spot. Um, fingers crossed for that big lane. It can't be far away, surely. Well, that didn't take long after we put that last fish back. This one actually feels quite a bit heavier. I want to jinx it. It's... I don't want to jinx it, but it feels. Oh, he's having there. Quite a bit heavier. <laughs> he looks massive as well. Sorry, I'm a bit of a pickle. That's quite quite a big fish actually. That's one of the big ones. Might have to just come that side and next year, mate. That's alright. I'm not sure Swap which one. That's one of the one of the bigger ones. Oh, it was a good comment. Yeah, like I was just saying, it's only about 45 minutes ago I put that rod back out. And uh, it's gone for this one now. Off the same spot as well. There's a chunky of common. Oh, lovely. How big is that one? Cool. It's not a bad common, that. Right, so that's unhooked in the, in the net. Just get that secured. And get the rod straight back out. Probably a couple more spawns as well. It's definitely looks like they've got the heads down. See if we can uh, make the most of this little feeding spell. All right, so I'm going to get get this rod sorted, get it back out on the spot, um, and then I'm going to get a couple more spawns back on. It's it is crazy for being February and you <laughs> ringing the ding up dinner bell, as as the saying goes. But it seems to be working. It's worked the last few weeks down here as well. Just a top up of the bait, whether it's keeping them interested or they are reacting to that that splash of the spawn hitting in. I mean, if they ain't broke, don't fix it. Right, so there's a couple more spawns on the spot. Hopefully it won't take that long again. Like I said, it was about 45 minutes to an hour last time. These conditions that we've got are, are perfect for this time of year. We've got a strong southwesterly coming now. We've got 40 mile an hour gusts. Probably sitting at about 11, 12 degrees. Perfect conditions for this time of year, really. Right, then we're gonna get this common out. I mean, it's looking quite a nice fish to be fair, probably mid 20. Um, yeah, let's get it out and have a look. Matt Hayes would be happy with that one. Oh, 
30 pounds Right there. 30, 12, I'll give you that. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's a bit bigger than, our, than we thought. Well, I thought it was up for 20, but I didn't think she was going to go 30. It's a nice fish, didn't even, don't even recognise this one. Just get her up for a couple of stills. I'm so really, really, really over the moon with this one. Um, don't recognise it from any photos that the members have sent me. She went £30.12. This session is becoming uh, a pretty good one to be fair. A couple of fish over £30 now. But an Italian 9 fish in uh, just over 24 hours. So happy, 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 happy. So um, yeah, did, did not expect this. Get a couple of photos of her and get her back. and. Hopefully, with these conditions, I keep saying it, but that big linear, come on, it's, it's got to be on the cards. Stocky by the looks of it. Dumpy one. Oh, that's what the time is. Oh, you've got to watch one. Can't see it. That's fish number 10. I think it's about 5 o'clock in the morning, we've just checked, um, and I'm absolutely shattered. Yesterday morning it kicked off about half six when we had the flurry of five fish. So I think the thing to do is to get these fish back, get the rod back on the spot. A couple more spawns. Um, so there's a couple more fish in here that I want to catch. So I must keep up the tempo. morning it's uh, currently eight o'clock running on not a lot of sleep we've got a couple of coffees in us this morning to get his perky um, ended up on four fish throughout the night last night uh, biggest being that 30 pound common which didn't really know it was in here um, absolutely belt of that one is the conditions today look spot on for a daytime bite but as I've said before there's it's not really known for the daytime bite Apart from one yesterday in the, in, in the late afternoon, so we're hopeful of one in the next few hours. But if we don't get one, we're finished on 10 fish, up to 35 pounds. For February anyway, really, it's a result, and I'm over the moon with that, really. Um, so yeah, so if we don't catch any more, we'll see you again soon. <laughs> 